Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Oh my goodness, so there is a new hot stock on the market and people are going in nuts over it because it has the political flavor to keep people highly invested and potentially even taking a note from Wall Street and Reddit, Diamond Hand, a brand new stock going public via a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC. The Trump Media Group is going public under ticker symbol DWAC. And folks, you don't even wanna know what it looked like today. But because you're watching this video, you either know or you wanna know. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you anyway, folks. DWAC is a SPAC. And when something is a SPAC, it usually sits around a $10 par value. That's what you have right here, $10. This is because people, investors in this digital world acquisition company, believe in the people who put this company together so much so that they give them money at a value of $10 per share to go find a company to purchase. They have a certain specific time frame that they have to purchase a company by. And then once they find a company and strike a deal, they release an update, also known in the Wall Street world as an 8K. And they say, hey, look, we entered into an agreement to acquire a certain company and take it public through what's known as a reverse merger. You don't really have to know what the specifics of the deal are, but what's important to know is anything above $10 is really profitable for the initial investors who are in the deal. Given that right now, in just one day, this is one day, the darn thing is up over 356% to $45.50, and in the after hours, it's running even more, up 26.97% to $57.99, meaning if you invested $10 as one of those private equity investors through the pipe, you'd be up almost 6X on your money today. Well, folks, obviously, there's a lot of attention being drawn to this, and that's what happens. Take a look at this, though. At the same time as we're seeing these insane numbers on this particular SPAC, watch this. Facebook stock down 5.08% in after hours after going up just a third of a percent today. Or here's another one. Let's look at some of the other social media stocks. Snapchat down 0.69 on the day and down 0.23% in after hours at the time of this recording. Twitter down 59%, I'm sorry, 0.59% on the day and 3.98% in after hours. So wait a minute, why the heck are all of the traditional media stocks going down and Trump media is going to the moon? Is it because people are fed up with social media, corporate elitism, and the disaster of communication and censorship that we have in the United States? Well, yeah, that's definitely one of the reasons, but there are a lot of other factors that go into this. Like the fact that Snapchat missed on earnings today because of changes that Apple made, making it harder to make money with advertising on platforms like Snapchat, Twitter, or even companies like Facebook or Etsy. And we're not gonna make this video political. We're gonna look at this video as a neutral person here, because look, I've got qualms on both sides. I actually ran for California governor. That was before my hair was green. And I know that politics is pretty dang device, uh, divisive and especially censorship is something that happens. I posted my announcement for my uh, gubernatorial campaign and I came in second place of the recall candidates in California. Uh, and my announcement post was deleted by Facebook. Twitter refused to ever verify me as a candidate, which is something they always do for elections. Oh, but not in California. They decided, nope, we're not gonna verify anyone else except the governor who's running in this recall election. And so a lot of this sort of frustration that we see or censorship in the media spills out over into our discussions, community discussions, discussions with our friendships. And now folks, we actually have a place we can put our money to say we're sick and tired of it, but is DWAC a good investment? Is it a good idea to protest media censorship and throw your money into DWAC because it is what is taking the Trump Media Group public and Truth Social public? Well, that's what this video is about. By the way, in the last minute that I've been talking, the stock is now up 30% in after hours. <laughs> Jeez. All right, folks. So here's the thing. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what the company is. 
And then I'm gonna give you some reasons as to why the stock's going up. And then we're gonna talk about whether or not you should invest in this or not. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, presentation documents for this. You can look up Truth Social in the Apple App Store. It's available for pre-order. I am not sponsored by them. I don't care if you sign up or you don't sign up. I have, I'm not taking any position on this, whether you do or don't. Uh, this document was prepared here, October, 2021. And it's worth noting that this PDF document here is, uh, it's known as an investor presentation, but what it really is from the, the view of a finance professional is a sales presentation. They want you to invest in this stock. And the easiest way to get people to invest in a stock is make people feel like there is an us versus them happening as a reason why you've got to buy and hold a stock. This is exactly what happened with GameStop. Think about GameStop for a moment. What happened in January? Sure, there was a higher short squeeze percentage available for people who were wanting the stock or expecting the stock to go down. But what happened was you took a stock that was essentially trading at the beginning of the year for $18. The stock ran up to $347, intraday ran up to over $482. There were rumors that it was going to $1,000. The stock promptly fell back down to $45, but then now has eventually settled around 181. This happens very commonly when we have a large momentum movement around a stock. Usually these sorts of peaks are momentum movements, and we usually don't see sort of lasting attention at momentum moving stocks. I'll give you another example or a few more examples later, and they're gonna be a whole lot different from the GameStop one, but I wanna start by saying I believe this investor presentation is trying to create a GameStop style movement where you take a stock that has little to potentially no fundamental value and you create so much implied market value that you can actually create something great with now the market value opportunities you have. More on that in just a moment, but let's go through this. So remember what you're looking for is to be sold on this. I can tell you out of the gate, Probably not a lot of Democrats gonna be sold on this one because take a look at this. The Trump Media Group, uh, TMTG, the acronym it, aspires to be or create a media powerhouse to rival the liberal media consortium and fight back against the big tech companies of Silicon Valley who have used their unilateral or one-sided power to silence opposing voices in America, notably Facebook, Twitter, and others. Donald Trump, obviously, and, and the Trump Media Group make the argument here that there is liberal bias, that this is a dangerous exercise of monopoly tech censorship, and that essentially by competing with them, by creating another opportunity, the Trump Media Group has the real chance of creating a, a platform that caters more towards potentially a more conservative agenda or in their opinion, a more uh, free agenda. Okay, now let's see some of the other things here. So we've got headlines here, Twitter bans Trump, Amazon will suspend hosting for pro-Trump social network parlor because we know that Trump was banned from Twitter, then his apps were removed from the Apple store, the Android store, parlor was taken down. We remember some of these things back in January. Twitter bans the US president, but the Taliban still has a Twitter account. Are our freedoms under attack, right? This is supposed to get us to feel upset and to want to invest in this company. Remember, it's a sales pitch document. Market opportunity. Nothing screams selling a stock like the letters TAM or total addressable market. And even though they're not trying to sell you products through the Trump media group, they're comparing themselves to Apple uh, and uh, Amazon, <laughs> Amazon's the one I circled first, Apple's the one I circled second, uh, Netflix, Google, and Facebook. Now, I think a fair comparison is obviously Twitter and Facebook. Uh, some of these are a little bit of a stretch to compare to. Uh, but the uh, Trump Media Group then also goes on to compare themselves not just to social networks, but also traditional networks like Disney, iHeart Radio Media, or obviously left-leaning uh, platforms like uh, CNN. But what they're really doing is they're saying, hey, if we grow in the future, we might be able to get into web services like what Amazon does, cloud computing like the web services that Google provides, payment processing. Got a lot of um, hopium, I like to call it, where they're selling you something uh, with the impression that this is gonna be big. And the best way to make you believe that it will absolutely be big is by making you feel like they can do absolutely 
everything. And that's really what we're getting here, is they're trying to sell you on the idea of joining a, quote, non cancelable global community, and they want to attack everything. Netflix, Twitter, iHeartRadio, whatever, Instagram, you name it. You can also go over to truthsocial.com and join the waiting list to get into the app early to get an account. Now, Truth Social has already had uh, either an instance of, I don't think it was necessarily hacking, it was more like name squatting. Somebody stole uh, Donald Trump's username in it, and I believe this has all been corrected at this point. So that was just sort of like a side story in, in this whole drama here. The big story, obviously, is what's happening to the stock. Uh, and again, not sponsored doesn't matter to me if you sign up or not. The only thing I sponsor are the programs on building your wealth down below. So if you want perspective on investing in stocks or real estate, or you want to build wealth, uh, not so much with a lottery ticket, but uh, get rich for sure through uh, strong, uh, sound investing principles, then check out the programs linked down below on building your wealth. Stocks and psychology of money, you get all my buy sell alerts, uh, real estate programs, we do real estate analysis, amazing things for you to learn uh, and save money. All right, take a look at this. Trump Media and Technology Group. This is the uh, 8K that was released by DWAC today, October 20th. That is, uh, this was last night is when this was released. And they've entered into a definitive merger agreement. The company is being valued at $875 million plus the opportunity as long as the stock performs to create or generate an additional $825 million. This creates a combined valuation of about $1.7 billion uh, for this SPAC. Uh, so uh, now usually, usually, usually with, with SPACs, it's worth noting that you're only going to have access to about 10% of the shares of this company. So it's relatively small in terms of how much of the company actually ends up going public. But they are still seeking to raise somewhere around $1.7 billion. So far, what we really have is a company that has wireframes and a register website. It'll be interesting to see what kind of platform ends up getting developed. Donald Trump has been talking about building a platform since January, so he's obviously had plenty of time to be able to build something with developers and programmers or whatever. Worth noting that Donald Trump here says, I created Truth Social and the Trump Media Technology Group to stand up to the tyranny of big tech. We live in a world where the Taliban have a huge presence on Twitter, yet your favorite American president has been silenced. Uh, DWAC currently has $293 million, oops, that's supposed to be the highlighter, $293 million in trust and assuming minimal redemptions. This is when people would want their money back uh, who invested in the pipe. Uh, and uh, this money is designed to fuel TMTG's scale up, including providing world class technology services to build strong, secure social networks. So they're kind of even saying in here that they don't really have everything built out yet. And uh, that additional information is to come, uh, including uh, further information like their S4, which they intend to file along with other information that is coming out in the future. This is really just announcing that the partnership has been made. And now all of a sudden we're seeing the stock again, DWAC, that is a SPAC, do extremely well. So should you invest in DWAC and why is it going up so much? Well, first, there are a few reasons why the stock is going up so much. And I'm going to keep this as simple as possible since there's a chance you might not be super familiar with stocks. When you have a company, so let's say uh, this, this right here is a company, this little house right here. When, when you sell a company in shares, you're, what you're doing is you're selling little slivers of that company, right? And let's say there are 100 million of those slivers. Usually with a SPAC, you're only going to sell about 10 to 11 million. So you're really only going to sell a little portion of this property. The rest, or company, right? The rest continues to be controlled by uh, pro presumably Donald Trump and, and some of the people who are working with uh, him on developing this application. This is normal. This is very, very normal. But in the SPAC process, it tends to do something known as it creates a low float. Uh, and the problem with the low float is it's just basically a way of saying there aren't that many shares available uh, for people to buy and hold on to. Let me give you an example. Let's say that there are 1 million shares available for something, but immediately uh, nine, let's say 9,000 people come in and each of them say, you know what? We're going to buy 100 shares. Well, if 9,000 people buy 100 shares each, 
then we're going to all of a sudden be in a place where uh, we have 900,000 shares tied up. And so if these people are holding on to the shares, now you actually only have 100,000 shares to trade with. And this, this, these are just example numbers, right? The, the actual number is probably a lot larger. But if there are a lot of people holding on to the shares, you have a very small percentage of an already small percentage of the company that's freely trading. And when there's are less shares available, the price can usually go up quicker because there are fewer sellers. So the way that might work is somebody might say, hey, I'm gonna buy it at $15. I'll be willing to sell it for 25. Well, if there's nobody in between here and somebody else says, hey, I'm willing to buy it for 25, the stock will immediately go to $25. And this is a lot of what we saw today in, uh, in the stock market here for DWAC. This is actually uh, the warrant set. So let me go to DWAC. I'll explain warrants in just a moment. So you go to DWAC, this thing started. Uh, kind of look where, uh, where my mouse is uh, right here. And uh, you kind of see the pricing here, the closing for that minute. Uh, so the stock really started about 14, uh, then it ran up to about 17, 19, 20, 25, went to 30. Uh, went to a uh, high 40s here, went to 51 for a moment, and now in the after hours, it's going up to $59. And uh, it, you could see every single minute, about 1.2 million shares traded hands. So kind of the example there on the sheet that I just showed you would be accurate f of a representation for maybe uh, about a minute or about 10 times that since a million shares are trading, right? So the actual number is probably 10 times that. Uh, per minute. But the actual number doesn't matter so much. The point is, there are going to probably be a lot of people buying this and holding it, not a lot of people selling it. Now, usually that isn't a problem because if a stock gets too rich and all of a sudden something's selling for $25 and the market thinks that's too expensive, that's where people can come in and they can do something known as shorting a stock. This is where they borrow the stock from somebody and then they sell it. So let's say you're holding on to the stock. I could borrow the shares from you and sell it. Now I'm providing liquidity at a lower price and that helps keep the price in check. But there are some problems here. In addition to having a low float, you have, like I mentioned, in my opinion, an army of folks who are going to politically want to hold on to this stock. We call that HODL, hold on for dear life, HODL that stock. But on top of that, you cannot short this stock yet. It is not available for borrowing. So you can't short the stock, which means you, the market can't accurately price this stock right now. There is no counterbalancing force. So you have very few shares, a lot of people of the shares who, that are outstanding holding on to it, and you can't short the stock. The company also has a, uh, is or is going to be the recipient, especially today, of massive, massive media attention, which remember the SEC actually tells us that mass media attention is one of the ways that we can actually get a stock to be extremely valuable, extremely quickly. Now that doesn't last forever, but the SEC just put together a report on why GameStop went to $482. And I wrote down what the SEC says. Something that creates a lot of momentum in a stock, the price going up, is the price going up. So when the price goes up, more people want to buy it because of the fear of missing out. Large volume changes, lots of people buying it and selling it all of a sudden. And that these are volume bars. So when you got a lot of changes here and prices going up, that meets two of the criteria. A large short interest, which according to Ortex, the short interest in this particular SPAC is over 20%, which probably comes out of the fact that a lot of SPACs have been shorted uh, since, well, uh, their highs around February of this year. Remember, this is a SPAC. And so a lot of folks just went out of their way and just started shorting all SPACs. Kind of sucks for them at this point, especially if that short interest is over 20%. But that short interest of over 20%, according to Ortex, could give more momentum for that for, for the stock to essentially keep going. Because like that is because if the short interest is high, then short sellers, when they start losing lots of money, might have to buy the stock back to stop their losses, leading the stock to go up even more. And then, of course, the SEC mentions frequent Reddit mentions, YouTube mentions, or significant coverage in social media. 
Worth noting as well, the short interest according to the S3 Partners app in the Bloomberg terminal is 16.22%. There's also another ticker symbol and that is DWACW. Those are to buy warrants for the company. Those are basically option contracts. And if you're not familiar with those, I would just recommend staying away from those. Those can go up more or down more faster with movements in the underlying stock. So that now begs the question, is the stock running to the moon essentially because of fundamental reasons? No, absolutely not. Is the stock running because of social movements, social inspiration, social frustration, partisan, politically partisan investments into this stock to make a point? And is this running because it is something that has low float? There are lots of hodlers reiterating the low float. You can't short it. There's a lot of mass media attention. The short interest is up. The price is up and it has jumps in pricing and the volume is up. Well, folks, the answer to all of this is obviously yes. So no, this is not going up because it's a really good company. Quite frankly, this company doesn't even have to exist. All that we know that exists right now is a sign up website, some wireframes, which is just basically pictures of an app that somebody could mock up in an app store and this SPAC. We have no earnings. We have no revenues. We have no operating costs, no advertising costs. We don't have anything. That's because the company is basically a brand new company. Now they're not lying to you saying they have a big company or that isn't new. They're being very transparent about it. But because of all the factors that I mentioned, this stock is very likely to pull a very big quantum scape style run up and crash. Now that is not me being negative about the company. I'm not taking a position either way. But if I type in QS or QuantumScape, the SPAC battery company or battery company that's spac look what happened, folks. It went from $10 in a very excited manner, went up, went up, went all the way up to $132. And look how quickly it came down. And this is a warning for you. 39% on the last day of its run over here, down 3%. Then it was up a half percent. Then it was up 2.38%. Then it was down 10.8%. Then down 3%. 10.8%. 40%. 0 0.2%. And then we kind of stabilized again. Up a little bit, down a little bit. And then you get this slow bleed out. Where the stock that used to be at $10 ran all the way to $132. Quickly sold off and then bled out the rest of the way. All the way to where it sits now at $24.91. Now, does this mean that the Trump media group is going to go back to $10 or $15 or $24? Not necessarily. In fact, this is a pretty unique stock where quite frankly, this could just stay high. Uh, not maybe not necessarily as high as it is now, but because of political intentions or wills of people to want to hold on to this uh, for political purposes, for uh, wanting to be a part of the movement purposes, right? But when this starts rotating down and attention starts going away from this, my guess is within the next week to three weeks, I expect this stock to come down substantially. I would not make a long run investment in this. Now this is not financial advice, but if I were looking at playing around with this stock, if I was interested in buying, I might potentially buy the stock, but then I would be prepared to sell. I would set a limit order to sell the darn thing. I would set a trailing limit as another option if I wanted to. Stop loss, you could do a whole host of things to make sure you sell if this price starts going down or get into it, day trade it, swing trade it, and get out of this. But once options start trading, once we can start shorting it, once the mass media stops talking about it, once, uh, once the mass media or in the reverse starts talking about how much it's fallen, then it's probably off to the races in terms of this going down. For now though, we might not have hit peak media yet. I still think there are a lot of people who haven't even heard about this, which means there's a good chance this could continue to soar. So congratulations for those of you making money on it. I wish you the best on making money. I encourage you to take profits liberally on this one often and continue to try to make money playing the stock. But it's not something that I would fundamentally hold until I get financials, in like a year or two <laughs> when the company actually operates something or even we have a chance to use the social media platform. But again, if you wanna make some short-term money, you could consider swing trading in this. Just be aware there's a risk of loss.
And if you want more of my insights, check out my programs on building your wealth, link down below. Thank you for watching. Share this video if you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next one.